for people living here locally. I mean, the site, I've been to it, and it's full of toxic waste. People who are living in these houses, they've all got a story to tell about that day 20 years ago. Many of them lost members of their family, and they say that they're continuing to suffer because of the tragedy. And they're saying somebody needs to answer for this. Legally, what they're saying is that they want to pursue the company to try and clean up the site, but whether the company will accept liability seems doubtful. Well, joining us live from Paris now is Jude Finisterra. He's a spokesman for Dow Chemicals, which took over Union Carbide. Uh, good morning to you. Um, a day of commemoration in Bhopal. Do you now accept uh, responsibility for what happened? Steve, yes. T today is a great day for all of us at Dow and I think for millions of people around the world as well. It's 20 years since the disaster and today I'm very, very happy to announce that for the first time Dow is accepting full responsibility for the Bhopal catastrophe. We have a $12 billion plan to finally, at long last, fully compensate the victims, including the 120,000 who may need medical care for their entire lives, and to fully and swiftly remediate the Bhopal plant site. Now, when we acquired Union Carbide three years ago, we knew what we were getting, and it's worth $12 billion. $12 billion. We have resolved to liquidate Union Carbide this nightmare for the world and this headache for Dow and use the 12 billion dollars to adequately compensate the victims. Uh, Jude, that, that's good news that you have finally accepted responsibility. Uh, some people would say too late, it's three years, yes. you know, almost four years on. When we acquired Union Carbide, we did settle their liabilities in the United States immediately. And we are now, three years later, prepared to do the same in India. We should have done it three years ago. We are doing it now. And I would also like to say that this is no small matter, Steve. This is the first time in history that a publicly owned company of anything near the size of Dow has um, performed an action which is significantly against its bottom line simply because it's the right thing to do. And our shareholders may take a bit of a hit, Steve, but I think that if they're anything like me, they will be ecstatic to be part of such a historic occasion of doing right by those that we've wronged. Just to uh, reiterate what Jude Finisterra, the spokesman for Dow Chemicals, has just said, he says Dow Chemicals now fully accept responsibility for the events in Bhopal. Great. That's it. Well done. Great. Now they want to. Radio. I can tell you one thing. We're not going out of business. We will continue to make profit. We will simply make slightly less profit than normal. But we are doing the right thing. We're comparing here, though, the value of money to the value of human life. And there is no comparison. It's a, it's a good thing to announce. Exactly. I mean, how often does Dow get to, yeah. you know? <laughs> it wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be a Dow spokesperson otherwise. Good. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna have a serious nervous breakdown now. Dow accepts responsibility for Bhopal, dash dash, spokesman. Where is that? In Reuters. Congratulations, your PB appearance. Everyone here at BBC cheered. It's over an hour and it's still headline news. Hello, this is Jude. Uh, who has said that? Perhaps they're not in communication with the Dow, um, with the Dow leadership. Hello? Yes, this is Jude Finisterra. Sure. Right. Sure. Right. Uh, let me just, uh, yes, could I ask you to either, uh, to hold for a moment? Okay, thank you. They, they know. Yeah. So now, I guess, I just basically come clean, right? Well, I wouldn't say it's a hoax. It's an honest representation of what Dow should be doing. 
This morning, a false statement was carried by BBC World regarding responsibility for the Bhopal tragedy. The individual who made this statement identified himself as a Dow spokesperson named Jude Finestra. Dow confirms that there was no basis whatsoever for this report. Well, earlier today, we carried an interview with someone purporting to be from Dow Chemical, a company which subsequently bought the plant from Union Carbide. This interview was inaccurate and part of an elaborate deception. Take a look at this, Dow. Like, look at this. This is the top of Google News. Dow said on Friday there was no basis whatsoever in a BBC World Report saying it had accepted responsibility for India's Bhopal disaster. That's a funny sentence. The hoax was an elaborate one involving a fake website. Dow Chemicals was quick to issue a series of statements denying all knowledge of a Jude Finisterra. Also tonight, backtracking because of this man. We're going back to the BBC television studio right now that we were at this morning because they want to talk to us. I thought, well, OK, what do they want to know? Well, let's go see. So you were really <laughs> Right? Yeah. Why Hello. did you die? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, when, did the, uh, when did it occur to you to, to pull this off? It didn't occur to us at all. We, we got contacted by you guys. You know, it's <laughs> the Dell's share price. Yeah, I did hear that. Has it percent, uh, gone back up? Or? Well, the prank which briefly knocked 3% off Dow shares comes 20 years to the day after the chemical leak from the Union Carbide plant in Bhopal. Today's unlikely corporate humiliation of a US chemical giant was all about reminding the world that Bhopal remains an unhealed sore. Well, earlier I spoke to Andy Bicklebaum and I asked him what he did when he got an email from the BBC asking him for an interview. Essentially, Dow has been uh, promulgating a hoax um, by which they've convinced people that they can't do anything about Bhopal, that they cannot accept responsibility. And we wanted to prove that that was not accurate. I mean, it is nevertheless a pretty cruel trick to play on the people of Bhopal. Well, we... Did you think about um, the people of Bhopal when you, when you, when you decided to peddle this stunt? Yes, yes, we did. And well, that surely is the tragedy of, them... of today. You spring upon them the, the actual hoax that they they actually suddenly believe that they have got a payout from Dow and, uh, and then, you know, an hour or two later they find it's untrue. Let's put this in contrast. I mean, we may have given uh, two people two hours of false hope. Dow has given them 20 years of suffering. I mean, Are this, you, is, um, this is ex what we're expecting with. the next knock at the door to be Dow's lawyer? No idea what Dow will do. Dow's lawyers didn't call. And millions of people learned for the first time that 20 years on, Bhopal was never cleaned up. But the media also reported that many of the victims in Bhopal cried tears of joy upon hearing the news and were then bitterly disappointed. Had we actually upset the people we'd meant to help? There was only one way to find out. Here we are, we're in India. Hey. Hey. And this is Bhopal. Bhopal is a big city. There's over a million people here. Unfortunately, we heard from a lot of uh, news reports that the victims here in Bhopal were extremely upset because we had raised false hopes about uh, them actually getting some compensation after 21 years. What do you think they'll do? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, what's the local custom here? I mean... We're here at the Sambhavna Clinic, and this place was set up by a bunch of people uh, to help treat the gas victims of the worst industrial accident in history. So patients come in from here. This is a forum, basically, where we uh, determine their history of gas exposure, where how far they were living, or they were they sleeping in a tent that night, and then their severe degrade is determined. These are some of the disabled children, and every uh, 
system of the body has been affected. You know, the musculoskeleton, the nervous system. 40% yeah. of the women coming here under 40 have menopause. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is so cute. Hey. Oh, my God. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We got the news that Dow is willing to pay $12 billion. I mean, first, we just, we felt it, the news was too good to be true. Uh -huh. And Dow was too bad for the news to be true. Yeah. But still, we thought maybe it is true. Maybe yeah. they're just seeing sense in this. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, for about an hour, yeah. we were under that impression. Yeah. Did people cry with joy? Yeah. I cried. Yeah, oh, no. I know, lots of people cried. Were you kind of angry at first, though, when you heard it was a, a hoax? No, I wasn't angry, no. Wow. You think it was worth it? Totally worth okay. it. Okay. We are saying no more Bhopal. What people have gone through here, no one else in the world should go through this. I think we're in uh, Shiv Shivaji Nagar. And it's been a little bit of a, a bit of a, a well, a, a bit of a, <laughs> a maze getting here. A little, what, what do you call that? We got lost. We got lost. That's what it's called. We're trying to meet up with a journalist to interview and we got lost. Here he is. Here he is. Oh my God. Okay. Rajkumar Kaswani broke the disaster story. In fact, he broke it years before it actually happened. So you had already predicted how many times that the, the, the disaster would happen before it happened? Uh, in newspapers, four times. Once to the chief minister, dozens of times to the local legislators, and uh, once to the Supreme Court. I'm the most unfortunate person in this world who has got the recognition for his failure. I, had, I, had I succeeded, it wouldn't have happened. When you heard it was a hoax, the thing that we did, were you like, what did you think of it I at first? That, I, I thought that was a wonderful thing to do. We were put into a situation which we never thought of that would actually happen. So, so it is just like being in the heaven. Because I'm sure I'm not going to be in the heaven. So, so, so if one, if if I'm expecting hell, and suddenly someone puts me for the while in the heaven, so I said, okay, thanks. <laughs> Twenty years since the disaster, the poisons left behind at the plant were still leaching into the groundwater. Communities that you see in red have not gotten a single drop of clean water. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Until now? Until now. Eight communities are getting about 12% of the requirement. But this is contaminated water. Some of them used to drink, uh, cook, wash clothes. Dow could clean up their mess, but they didn't. Instead, they spent tens of millions of dollars on an ad campaign to clean up their image. For each of us, there's a moment of discovery. And just then, in the flash of a synapse, we learn that life is elemental. And in the dazzling brilliance of this knowledge, we may overlook the element not listed on the chart. Its importance so obvious, its presence is simply understood. The missing element is the human element. And when we add it to the equation, the chemistry changes. The human element is the element of change. The human element. Nothing is more fundamental, nothing more elemental.